What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python with Finance tutorial video. In this video we're just going to pick up where we left off and that is the creating of these feature sets. The idea here is for every day in this his history of 100 days, we're going to take that day, the previous 10 days, and then the way what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, from that final day to today, did the price go up or down? If it went up, great, let's make a buy. If it went down, no, let's sell. So in the training, what we'll do is if the price went up, we say, great, that's a one. And if price went down, eh, that's a zero or a negative one or whatever. Uh, it'll be easiest to, to label that as a negative one because then we could just go through and say the uh, prediction equals how much we're going to buy or something. But uh, it really doesn't matter uh, what you do there. Should, it's useful to note uh, with machine learning, generally your features, they're best put between negative one and positive one. So it just works out if we continue using these numbers. Uh, and we use pre-processing to kind of make sure our data does that. So we'll be talking a little bit more about pre-processing when we hit it, because so far we haven't really needed it, but you'll see why uh, we're gonna use it here in a moment. So we define x, y, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, bar equals the start bar. So this is the starting point because we can't say, hey, what was the price 10 days ago? If we start from the first element of the list and we try to get the last 10 days, it's gonna be like, no. So we can't do that. So we're gonna say bar equals start bar. And then what we're gonna say is we're gonna say, wow, bar is less than uh, the length of the price list uh, minus one. So while that's the case, what do we want to do? Because keep in mind, length will start, the first element will say one, whereas when we're slicing lists, the first element is a zero. So that's why we're doing minus one there. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is, while that is the case, what do we want to do? Well, first let's go ahead and encase this in a try and accept. Otherwise, we're going to not get any features at all. So we definitely want to get our features. Except, exception as E. And then for now, we'll just print the string version of E here. And actually, um, it's probably a good idea to, to give yourself a little more information. So let's go ahead and say uh, feature creation. Okay, so this just lets us know the exception that we're throwing is specifically for the feature creation while, while loop. So we'll just add that here, feature creation. This is just for our notes, basically. So down the line, if we're throwing an error, we'll see exactly where that error is even occurring. So we'll know it's in this loop. Chances are we'll throw some from time to time. I'm sure we'll get some, you know, nons or nans or whatever you want to call it, you know, not in numbers. So that's how we're going to handle those. Now, the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is within this try, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, the end price. So end, under, whoops, end underscore price is going to equal price underscore list and then bar plus one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say um, we'll do... Uh, I hate to call it like starting price, but that's kind of what we want to call it. So we'll call it start price, but it's not the starting price of the bar necessarily. But because the question is, we're going to say, okay, the price is, let's say it's 192, right? And then we've got the previous nine prices. And then what we're trying to do is we're trying to compare the pattern changes of the these last 10 prices to predict what will the next price be, right? And so the start price will be basically uh, price list and then bar, right? That last price, okay? That last price in the list, that's what we're interested in. So, and then, so that's the last price in the list of prices. And then the end price is where did that price, where was the subsequent price at? Was that a rise or a fall? So, uh, so if that's still a little confusing, uh, just stick with me. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, it's kind of confusing, I suppose. Uh, and in fact, I could bring up paint or something like that, but, but basically let's say the prices are five, six, five, seven, six, five, six, something. I hope I'm just trying to get to 10 here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. Okay. So let's say the last price, this is like, this is the current price right now is eight. Okay. 
So this is the current price and the last nine prices are these prices. And our, our objective is to figure out what that next price is going to be, right, in this list of prices. That's what we want to know. So what we're doing is we're taking the historical prices and saying, okay, well, the historical prices were X, Y, Z, seven, you know, all the way through that list. And then we're saying the subsequent price after this list of prices was this. And what we do is we have machine learning look at these changes. So what it's going to do is it's going to look at the change from this price to this price to this price to this price. And it's going to kind of envision it almost like a like a like a pattern basically and it will be like well when these changes happen in this order generally this is what happens or when these changes happen in this order this is generally what the next price is and so on so this is our objective and it turns out machine learning is typically pretty good at this uh, but we'll see how well it performs in, in this situation so we've got the end price the start price and then what we're going to say is uh, we've got pricing underscore list. So this will be, be the actual list of prices. And what we'll do is we'll just say x, x equals zero. We just need something here to count us through basically. And then we're gonna say for underscore in range, in the range of context dot feature window. So basically, cause we're asking always, you know, we're gonna say, okay, we wanna reference the last 10 prices and so like the last 10 prices constitute our pattern, so to speak, or really the last 10 prices are our features. But it's probably best to envision this like a pattern or something. Uh, so our last 10 prices are this. And so basically this is our way of iterating through that. When people use an underscore in a for loop or pretty much whatever, but usually it's in a for loop, it basically means that variable, whatever it is, is useless. Like You're not going to see that variable come up in the for loop. So if you wanted to use the variable, you wouldn't use an underscore as the variable. But when you see it like here, it just kind of notifies someone reading through the script that, hey, you're not going to see this, this variable in the for loop. It's literally just being used like a counter. So for underscore in range of context.feature window, which is 10 for us, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say the price that we're referencing here is going to be equal to price underscore list. So that's price list is right here, right? It's that massive list of prices. So try not to confuse it with pricing list. So <laughs> price is equal to this large list of prices. Um, and that is going to be sliced by the current bar that we're on. So we're starting at the start bar, but as we go on, we're going to add one to it. So that will be our starting point bar. And then it will be bar minus. And then in parentheses here, we're going to do context.feature underscore window minus xx. And then we'll do a uh, pricing list dot append price. And then we do XX plus equals one. So the way it's going to do this is it will take the bar, the current bar that we're on, it references that bar. And then we start the list by saying, okay, we're on this bar. The previous 10 prices were the bar minus the feature window, which is 10. That one's first, minus XX, which is currently zero. Then when we iterate through the next loop, XX is one. So then it will be price list of the bar minus context window, which is 10, minus one. Now it's nine. So minus nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And then we'll be, that will be our full list in chronological order. So a little difficult to get there, but, but we got there. So now outside this for loop, what we're gonna say now is features now the problem here is we've got these we've got these features but these are prices and the prices are going to be different for each ETF or stock or whatever that we're using we need some way to to what's called normalize the data so the the pricing change between like a $200 stock it might move by $2 at a time but if we have a $10 stock moving at $2 at a time that's massive fluctuation so we need to find some way to kind of normalize all of our data. So an easy way to do that would be to do like a percentage change. So percent change is new minus the old divided by the old times 100. So features, what we can do is we can say, 
we're going to use num np, which I don't think we've actually imported numpy. So let's go uh, import numpy as np. And then we're going to say features equals np dot a round. And what this is going to do is it allows us to round all the elements in, an, in a numpy array. And we're going to round the following. So we're going to say we want to do np.diff. So this is the pricing difference of pricing underscore list. Uh, and then we divide that. Whoops. What is happening? There we go. Divide it by the pricing underscore list to the final element times it by 100.0. And we round it to the first decimal point. This is just to keep things not, you know, super long decimals. We don't want like mile long decimals. We want it pretty short. So that creates our features. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, at this point, let's do a bar plus equals one. And let's just for now print features and see if we build. If we build, we'll continue on in the next tutorial. And if we have an error, hopefully we'll, we'll fix it here. X is assigned, Y is assigned, never used. Uh, that's fine. It should be uh, Quantopian, if you're watching. Uh, your little debugger here, while it is useful, um, it undercases like everything. It's a capital X. And if someone uses like a lowercase and a capital X, they're not going to know which one that is responding or corresponds to. Anyway, into the logs. Okay, cool. So we didn't get errors. Awesome. So these are our features, right? These are the percentage changes rounded to the first uh, decimal point. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, and so on. Okay, minus 0.1. Uh, so cool. We're off to a pretty good start. We've got feature lists. They're normalized across all of the ETFs because it's in percent change now. And we're ready to... Uh, we've got our features. Now what we need to do is compare that start price and end price. So what was the difference between today and tomorrow-ish, like in the history of things? Uh, and that cre and then we'll say if, if that was an increase, great, that's a buy. If it was a decrease, uh-oh, that's a sell. So we'll get that information. That'll create our label. And then pretty soon, we'll get to the point where we can actually start using these labels to actually execute trades and all of that. So uh, that was actually not very much code, uh, but it, it was thick code. So if you have any questions or comments up to that point, uh, please feel free to leave them uh, below. I almost said leave them alone. <laughs> Don't ask any questions. Uh, leave them below, and I'll do my best to kind of explain everything uh, a little better if, if that was confusing. So anyways, if you're lost, whatever, leave questions below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.